everyone, it's Monday and I just finished work and dinner and now I'm gonna come in here. And today I am going to do something that you, you guys have requested, well, some of you have requested a, a while back. And it's um, different closures, different clasps, different ways to close different things. So um, I am brought to the table stuff that I most commonly use and um, only because like it's it's what I know the best and so these are the things I'm going to show you and honestly like you can do so much with these and you'll see in just a moment that um, there's really like not really any wrong way to well there are wrong ways to close things but um, you have many options for each type of stringing material that you are using so um, I want to show you those things the ones that I most commonly use and then that way um, it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of different things that you can do, whether it be between adding some kind of metal um, piece to the end of um, a stringing material or to doing a knot or something like that. But um, I just wanted to let you guys know that I heard you. I heard you loud and clear. There's a lot of you out there who are just starting out who really want to know these. And I know a lot of times when I go through my tutorials that I'm not showing you the close up of what it is actually looking like because I'm far too focused on the project. So um, so I'm bringing you this and I hope you like it and I hope it helps. Please, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment on it. Um, or if you have anything that you've done that you didn't see me do um, or tips and tricks to share with everybody else, some of you who may be seasoned or whatever, um, please share away because um, not only would I like to know, but everybody else would like to know too. So if you have any trade secrets, let us know. All right, you guys, let's get started. Okay, everyone, I hope you can see everything really well here. So I have several different types of materials that I use often. So um, I have just your regular standard um, stringing wire or tiger tail. I have two little scrap pieces here that we're gonna use. I have some um, cotton wax cord that we can do some stuff with. I have some Coriana chain. So if anybody is interested in using like a beaded metal chain, um, this will show, I'll show you how to do that too. I have a little scrap piece of leather here. I've got a larger scrap piece of leather here. And we have some sari silk, or if you don't have sari silk, ribbon would be the same, okay? Pretty much the same. <clears throat> So anyway, so we hit, those are our stringing materials. And then down here, so we have like several different types of clasps, right? So we have our lobster clasps, we have our buttons, and we have toggles. And there are other things out there too that are kind of like the toggles, like the hook and eye, stuff like that. Those are all, like these two will be pretty much the same, well, even this. So. I'm just gonna kind of show you different things. So let's start first with um, some stringing wire. Almost always when you are doing any kind of project, you're going to need jump rings. You're going to need your tools, you know, um, that kind of thing. So first, let me show you, there is an option. This is a clamshell. Um, I don't know what the technical term is, but if you look up clamshell for jewelry making, you'll be able to find um, find the right item. <laughs> anyway, so the ones I prefer to use, and I hope you can see it okay, I'm trying to get it to focus. It has holes that are closed on both sides. They make them to where you can close the hole. I don't recommend those because they can, they're pretty malleable and they can weaken. These are already closed all the way. So these are the ones I recommend for you. And looking at the structure of it, it looks just like a clamshell. So it has two rounded sides. There's a hole down in the center, and that's where your, str your stringing wire goes through. So these you can use on um, any kind of stringing wire like this. Um, I use it for a Coriana chain. So let me just show you what they look like for both. So if you're going to use this on your wire or on your chain for that matter, you would just slip it over top of your wire, like pretend this has beads on it or something. And then you're going to need a crimp bead or a crimp tube. Now for, 
for um, this this tutorial, I am using some less expensive um, crimp beads because I know I'm just gonna throw it away, okay? But I do highly recommend getting crimp tubes from Beadalon or Beadsmith. Um, they're just super durable. Uh, you'll, your crimps will be a lot easier. Um, they'll look nicer. I haven't tried the um, oh the Softlex one yet. That's kind of next on my list to give it a shot and try it out, just so I could see how well it works, you know, and everything. But I'm so used to using Beadalon crimp tubes that I just I it's like hard for me to change. Okay, so imagine that there are beads on this strand. And you're gonna have this part of your clamshell is gonna be sitting down by your beads. And you're gonna to wanna to put your crimp. Boys are doing dishes, I'm gonna go get the milk. Okay. Um, you're gonna to wanna to put your crimp bead right on, where, kind of like where you're gonna want it. So this one is easiest to do, I think, if, um, if you don't want to use like a wire guardian or um, honestly it's a very simple way to close off a bracelet or a necklace so you're just going to squeeze you don't need crimp you don't need crimping players for this one you're just going to squeeze that crimp bead until it's flat and then before you bring your clamshell up you want to tug on that to make sure it's really solid and I know it looks weird but you're gonna see that this is going to hide that so you take your crimp and you place it inside your clamshell, all right? And now you know where it's gonna be. Now you can trim off some of your excess, but leave just a tiny little bit, just so you don't run into the problem of maybe cutting your crimp. And now you have a little bit of, of thread in there, but you have your, um, your crimp is in there too. And now you can close your clamshell. Close it slowly because they can get a little off kilter. And then once you have it closed, you can press it close a little bit more. And now you have the end of that is finished. And you can use your jump ring to hook on either your, it'll work well with the lobster clasp, it'll work great with a toggle, it'll work great with a button. So you would just use a jump ring in all those situations and put your end on, okay? So that's that one. And then let me show you with a wire guardian. So now if you want to use wire guardians and crimp beads, then that's fine too. So, but for this instant, you can put, you put your crimp bead on first, okay? Clamshell, it goes on after your clamshell. With the wire guardian, it goes on first. Then you use your wire guardian and you just slip it down and then you can bring your wire around over the top of your wire guardian, put it through the next hole, and just push that wire in there, okay? So now you have this like, like a really elongated U shape. You would put your crimp bead through both of those, and notice how I don't have my wires crossed. They're coming out straight. You kinda wanna make sure you keep it like that don't want to cross your wires, it can weaken the wires and make it come apart. So now that you have your crimp bead on and you have your wire guardian on, you can come in with your crimping pliers. I don't know what brand these were. I've had them for years. You really, if you need a pair of crimping pliers, you can get, um, I believe I got them either Michaels or, or Hobby Lobby. But these are your basic crimping tools. They have the little holes, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like little macaroni noodles. And typically you're going to put the first crimp in the one that's closest to the actual, closest to you, okay? So you're gonna do the first crimp in there, okay? And then you crimp it down, and then you can see these two wires separated, they're both in their own little channel now, if you can see that, okay? And then you're gonna just turn it on its side and you're gonna come into the very front one and you're going to like fold it closed, okay? And now you have this very neat little crimp on your 
end. And that's what that looks like. Okay, so going back to um, the clamshell, I only know of one way to um, close off Coriana chain. So um, this beading chain you can get um, at Beadbox Bargains. They have it and they sell it. And it's just chain that's small enough to bead any kind of bead on it, as long as it doesn't have like too tiny of a hole, but it'll fit most beads. And it just really gives a nice look to your jewelry and it makes it so you don't really have to bead all the way up to the closure if you don't want to. So just like we did with the clamshell before, we're going to stick that clamshell right on our stringing material. Then we're gonna come in with our crimp tube or crimp bead, whichever you choose to use. And you're going to just stick that over top. Usually number two size crimp tubes or crimp beads are perfect for anything. All right, so now that we have that there, we're gonna to wanna to clamp that down on the chain. Now don't put it all the way to the end because if you start clamping down at the end there, you're gonna break off pieces of your chain and you don't wanna do that. So give yourself a little room and then once you know you have it squeezed flat, give it a test, pull on it and see. And I just use my regular pliers for these. I don't wanna use crimpers on it because the crimpers will make the chain break. So you're using just your regular pliers to clamp that down and make it flat, okay? So then next you're gonna push that clamshell up there. I try to line up my crimp so that it's flat and it's gonna fit inside my clamshell. And now you see I have some sticking out. Well, just like before, I wanna cut some of this off, but leave just a little tiny bit so that it doesn't interfere with my crimp, okay? And then I'm gonna come in with my pliers and just slowly close that so it's nice and neat and lined up. And then once you know that it's closed and lined up properly, you can come in and give it a nice little squeeze. Don't squeeze too hard because they are malleable and you can crush it and then you're gonna be sad because you're gonna wanna cut it off and redo it. So that's that. And again, all of these will work on any of these items, okay? You can use any of these closures on there and all you would need is just a jump ring. So excuse me while I use a gold jump ring because I'm just grabbing materials and using what I have in front of me here. So the jump ring, always open like this. You don't wanna pull it out this way because then you'll, you'll risk the integrity of your, your jump ring and it'll never go back to the way you wanted it, nice and round. So then once you get it in there, now you have the option of putting on your lobster clasp and closing it off. Or you have the option of putting it on a button and closing it or a toggle. So many, many options. Okay, all right, so moving on to other stringing materials. So we did chain and wire, which was really good to do. Like it's good to have like these little refreshers too. And like I said, uh, there might be somebody out there who might have, um, something that they've done that's tried and true that um, makes your life that much easier, then that would be great. Okay, so let's start with the sari silk. So sari silk is actually silk ribbon that is recycled from um, when people actually make saris. That's why it's called sari silk. So you can buy it, um, you can get it on Amazon, um, I have purchased mine on Etsy. I have somebody that I like because she really finds really nice colors and really nice patterns, some of which even has like little embroidery things on them. So um, I love getting that. So if you're wanting to know um, who I go to on Etsy, let me know and I'd be glad to, um, you know, let you know. <laughs> All right, so this you can do in so many ways. So I'm gonna get like a larger jump ring here because I've done this several ways. So one, if I know that I'm gonna jump, that I'm gonna to wanna to have a jump ring on the end, you can just bring it on and knot it. 
So with these, my best knot is just like a double overhand. So you would just go over once and then over twice and then just scoot that knot up to your ring. And once you do that, you can cut off this excess and it'll leave just a nice, like if you imagine that's cut off, it'll just leave a nice like knotted end, okay? So just a real simple double overhand. So like your like your first way you're tying your shoe, like that way, but do put the lace through twice. Okay, so that you can do, and it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of glue on it when you're done with your piece, because it'll just help it stay that much longer. And as far as glue, um, E6000 is a great glue. Um, also, um, GS Hypo Cement, I guess it's just depending on what material you're using. Um, I'm not super great with gluing things, so, but just read um, what it's used for and that'll help you decide. But you should definitely have both on hand. It's definitely a good thing. Okay, and then next is, um, let's talk about these crimps. So we have all different types of crimps. I just grabbed like a, a, a few variations of what I have. I grabbed all the same size of these, but I wanted to show you, these come in pretty much every metal color that you can imagine. You can get these little foldable ends in any metal color, all these different shapes. Um, I have round ones that are great for, you can use it for flat cord, or you can use it for round cord. Um, I have really teeny tiny ones that I enjoy using. Um, I use it, I'll use it for this. Um, but then these are great for a ribbon or for sari silk. So let me just show you that. So you want to, you're making a piece and you have some really cool big large hole beads on here and you're wanting to finish it off. You wanna do like a nice pretty ribbon bracelet. So what I do is I take it and I, if I'm using a whole piece, cause most of the time you will wanna just like rip this in half. But if you're using like a whole piece, I'm gonna to wanna to fold this end up, okay? just to make a nice, neat fold, okay? Just like that. And then you wanna look at it and see, is that gonna fit in there right? Is that gonna look right? If you need to make your fold a little bit tighter, smaller, you can, you absolutely can. And then you just stick this in the end This is where kind of you gotta kind of like hold it with your thumb nail <laughs> until you can get your pliers up there and start closing it. So I have this sari silk inside, all right, and then you're just going to start closing like on one end, and then you can move your thumb. Don't close it down on your thumb; it'll hurt. I didn't fold it really super neat, but you, you get what I'm saying. It finishes off the end really, really nice. So, and just like all the other things, you can grab your, um, your little jump ring, string it through, and you can put on your toggle clasp. You can put on your button, or you can put on your lobster clasp, okay? Super, super easy. So that's that's pretty much what you do with the sari silk. All right, we'll set that aside. And I'm going to grab something real quick and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. So next let's talk about this cord. So this is just like your wax linen cord. Um, it's, it's like a cotton cord cotton fiber cord that has like a little protective wax over it that helps beads slide on easier and helps um, hold like the shape of your knot so that it won't come undone. So these are great. This is really great to use. It comes in a variety of colors. It's usually thin enough to go through most beads. 
Um, I have used it mostly on like a, like a 6-0 seed bead and it just makes a really fun little easy colorful bracelet or a necklace. So you can use this really teeny tiny crimp, okay? And it's just a cord end, super teeny tiny. This is not usually the way that I like to do it, but I have done it in the past. And you just put the end of your cord in there, just lay it in there, and it has two sides. So this is where it gets a little messy. You take one side and you slowly fold it over until you know it's got that material underneath it, okay? So now you have one side that's flat. And then you just come around to the other side here and you just slowly fold it over. And now you have a secure end to your cord. So really super easy. And again, you know, let me grab my little opened up jump ring here. You can put it on anything. So you can, sorry, I got tangled up in my closed ones. You can put it on, let me think. Sorry guys, hold on one second. All right, and we can't think and do that at the same time. So you can put it on your button and close it up. You can put it on your toggle and close it up. Or you can even put it on your lobster clasp and close it up, okay? So very, very, a lot of different things you can do with that. The other thing is to do um, like a knot, like a loop and a knot. So let me show you that. Let me cut that off there. So we're gonna put this button on here for now, okay? So let's say you didn't wanna use any of those clasps and you wanted to put it directly on a button. You can definitely do that. And now there's couple different things you can do. You can just grab this and you can just do like an overhand knot and just put both cords through. Just that easy, okay? And just slide the knot up to where you want it. And most of the time you want to leave yourself a little bit of space with the button because you do want it to lay right. So then you just have an overhand knot, okay? really easy and you want your you always want your extra piece to come back this way so just watch when you're when you're uh, making your knot that you're not making it in the wrong direction and it's coming back at you this way so that's just your regular overhand knot that you can use to secure a button all right and then i will show you That is typically the one I do when I'm on the button side, but I can show you that you can do another knot that's a little bit more, um, a little more fancy if you want something a little bit more dressy. So if you want to do a barrel knot, you would just take both of your pieces together like this, okay? And you're going to just have them flat on top of each other, just one stacked right on top of the other. And then if you don't have a noodle bead, don't worry. You can take a plastic drinking straw, cut a chunk off about two inches long or so, and use that. Um, if I can't find these, I always keep like a few extra straws on hand in my desk drawer just in case of emergency. So, all right, and then you're going to lay that on top. And now you can kind of guide where you're gonna want your knot. The closer your, um, your noodle is to your where you want the knot to be, the easier it's going to be for you to move that knot down. So I have my noodle and it's laying on top of my, oops, I'm thinking of the other thing. Nope, you want it in between, sorry. I'm so sorry. I was thinking of a, of a sliding knot. We don't want a sliding knot here. I'll show you those though too. All right, so this is just to tie off your knot. So you're going to have one on top of the other with your noodle in between. You take your top one and you're just going to hang on to everything. You need like four thumbs here. And you're just going to wrap 
oh my goodness, hold on. It's really not that hard, you guys. I'm making it look harder than what it is. You're just going to wrap over top of your noodle and both of your threads. Come on, my finger's in the way. All right, there we go, we got started. <laughs> and you're gonna go as far as you want. Um, typically, three to four to five times around is you know what you're looking for. I'm doing three, and then you're going to put it in the end that is closest to your button, okay? And then even if it's not poking out the back, out the side, it's okay, because when you pull this, it pulls your thread. All right, so now you have this knot that's a very loose knot, but you can slide this knot up where you want it by pulling the longer thread, okay? And then pull the shorter one to tighten it once you get it where you want it to be. Okay, your longer one to slide it and then your shorter one to tighten it. And once you get it nice and tight, you have this nice little knot. And so it just looks a little bit um, nicer than just a regular overhand knot, if you can see it. All right, so that's overhand knot with nylon cord. All right, so um, I don't think, let me grab another piece of that because, or actually I have some leather right here, some round leather. So I'm gonna show you on here how to do a sliding knot. And now this would be if you wanted to make a leather bracelet and not use any kind of closure at all, but you wanted to just make this a sliding adjustable knot. So this is why I started showing you before because I had just been making them like crazy lately and I went into muscle memory and that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> All right, so pretend this is your full bracelet. And when you do a bracelet that you're gonna to wanna to put a sliding, a sliding um, adjustable knot on, you want to probably, I would say you wanna add another like three to four inches of leather on each side of your bracelet. So if your bracelet is like seven inches, then you should probably cut your leather probably like 14 inches or more, depending on how you, know, how you wanna do it. Okay, so your bracelet's done and now you wanna close it. So you take your ends that you have and you're gonna have one side that's gonna be longer than the other because that's just probably the way you're gonna end up stringing it. You have your short piece here, your long piece here, and your long piece is laying, it's crisscrossed, but laying also on top of your shorter piece, okay? Do you see what I mean? I know that sounds really dumb, but yeah. <laughs> Um, the thing to note is you want both ends, one end to be here, one end to be here for it to work properly and for it to look aesthetically pleasing, okay? So you're gonna take your tube and this is where you're gonna lay them on top of both, all right? And in order for me to get this piece on this side, it's gotta come through my where my right hand is. So we're going to take this and we're just going to wrap it over and through the circle, over and through the circle, over and through the circle. And then when you get there, you can just stick your thread or your leather, I'm sorry, through your little straw or your um, tube bead and just hang on to your knot, okay, that's important. And then just pull out your tube bead or your straw, and then you can pull your string. And now you see I have this nice round little knot started here, okay? So now you wanna just kinda pull on both pieces, just, you know, try to get it tightened down to where you want it. And do this part nice and slow. You're not in a hurry, it's not a marathon. Because the, the slower you go at it, the easier it is to guide it where you want it to be and how you want it to look. 
So this is how mine ended up turning out. I only did it three times around, so it really looks like two and a half. So I do recommend going maybe more than that. It'll just look nice. But now you can pull on that and you can make it smaller or you can open it up and make it bigger. So that's how you would end it. And then also too, um, just to have a stopper so that this doesn't come out, you'd want to either knot the end of both ends of your leather or put a bead at the end and knot it, just a little overhand knot, and that would act as your stopper. So if someone just yanked on it like that, it wouldn't pull out, okay? But see, the side stayed down in. <laughs> All right, and then you would need no clasp whatsoever. All right, so now we have like your, your regular like um, leather lace. So this is a um, two millimeter leather lace and um, same thing with this, there are different options. So with these I have, let me show you here, I have a shorter one. So if you want this to kind of like not really be a big part of it, you know what I mean? I have one that's longer and then I have one that's round. This one you can use for flat leather cord, but I would really use it for like the, the fatter round leather cord. It'd probably be best, but I have used it in a pinch and it usually ends up turning out okay. But I'll show you what it ends up looking like. So let's just kind of look at all of these. And again, these are the ones that you're gonna wanna use with a jump ring and um, you know, hook it onto your clasps, which can be any of those items, at any of them at all. So if you get your leather in here, and again, it's one of those things where you just gotta kinda fiddle with it, hold it. I have my finger holding the back and my thumb holding that down. And then just grab your regular pliers and slowly fold over one side. If you fold over too fast, these can look a little wonky and crazy, so just take your time and just as neatly as you can, just fold it right over. All right, and there is one way to finish off the leather. And again, it works with any of these clasps, okay? Any of them at all, just need a jump ring. All right, and then on this side, let's do this one. So this one's just a little bit longer. Just lay that right down inside there. This one you can also use a little bit larger of a cord width um, if you wanted to. Like a three millimeter would be fine. Three millimeter flat leather. Oh my goodness. All right, get that in there. Starting it is what's hard. All right, so I got it in there. Ah. Oh my goodness, you guys. All right, we're, we're gonna make this work. I'm determined to make it work. Oh, let's get that in there all the way. You know what, just for the sake of whatever it is, I'm just gonna push this up a little bit higher so I can grasp onto it a little bit better. All right. And we're just going to Oh my gosh, you guys, what is going on? All right, it's really not that difficult. You guys just saw me do it on a very small one. <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. All right. All right, so now that you, when you get it started, you can close it. This one's gonna probably look funky because I moved the cord. And this one is a little bit heavier duty. And I don't, I'm not really crazy about this closure because I just kind of end up looking like, you see what I mean? So, but if you had like a wider leather, it would probably be better, but it just folds over just like that. And then cut that one off. And then basically the same thing for this. You can use it on this, but I'll show you. It can be kind of messy. So um, I do recommend maybe saving the round ones for like round 
um, leather cord instead of the flat. But if it's all you have, you can use it in a pinch. You just gotta remember, you wanna go really slow to close it, to fold it over, and then come through and you can flatten it down. So it is possible to use it and it doesn't look bad at all. It actually looks pretty good. But um, yeah, you can see that there's like, you can see like the roundness of it, where this one, it hides all of that. You don't see any of that at all. So there's that. Um, so this one you can knot like the same way. Like let's use our button example. So even though it's a flat leather cord, you can still do it the same way. So you stick that through. Well, let's not do it on the button. Let's do it on this jump ring, okay? Because you can see it a little bit better. All right, let's say you wanted to just do um, your basic knot. So you're going to do your double overhand. So you have your knot, and then you, whoop, I'm doing it backwards. And you put it through once, and put it through twice. No, what am I doing? Hold on, you guys, I'm having issues. <laughs> put it through once, put it through again, and then you can just, I did it the opposite way, but that's okay. But I'll show you what I mean in a second here. So you can have your double overhand knot and just have like your basic knot here, which works just fine. Um, you can cut that off if you don't like it. You can bead something on it and leave it as like a little bit of a dangle. It, it would look good either way. All right, so there's your double overhand knot, which works out really nice. And then if you want to do your barrel knot, you can still do that the same way. So your barrel knot, you're gonna do it just like we did with the other one. You're gonna have your two pieces here, your two pieces that are, you know, one's your longer one that's beaded, one's your shorter one. And you're gonna usually want your longer one on top Put that in there and then you just want to wrap it around and around and around until you're happy with where it's at and now we want the string to come out this end so we're going to put it through here and this one when you use in the wider leather that's where your straw will come in handy. And it doesn't have to go in all the way. So if it's stuck and it's not gonna go through all the way, that's okay. You just really need it to grab onto and to pull your leather through. All right, so now we got that. I'm just gonna finish pulling it through, hanging onto my knot. See if I got this to turn out right. Okay, so there's my knot and I did like a small barrel. Whoops, I just messed it up because I pulled too hard. See, if you pull too fast, you mess up your knot, <laughs> like I just did. But either way, you know, you end up with this kind of a knot and both of your cords are going in the same direction. All right, so you can also, um, there are so many different types of knots out there, you guys, and I have only really mastered like a couple and I wouldn't even call it mastered because sometimes I still mess them up and I've been doing them for quite a while. So, um, but there are so many different tutorials out there that show you how to do these knots. And believe me, it, like if I haven't done one in a long time, I kind of forget like, oh my gosh. And I have like a couple that I've saved that on my phone so I can refer back to it if I need to. But there you go, that's, that's how it works. And when you do that, you can hook any clasp on. So you can do a button, you can do um, this. You can use it as, like if you just wanted to have this as like a loop that you could put your button through. I mean, it would basically look the same, same way. So you'd want to see how big of a um, piece you would need and you want to make sure it's small enough that you can fit the button through, but also small enough or large enough that you fit the button through, but small enough that it won't just pop out. 
So once you have that idea, you can just grab onto your leather right where you want the knot to be. And you can either overhand knot or you can come through and you can do a little barrel knot. And the good thing about the barrel knot is you can still, you know, kind of mess with the knot a little bit to make sure your button is going to fit in there right. So let's just do that. I'm going to use my shorter strand here. Oop, get that go there. And we're going to go around and around. Also using flat leather, sometimes the, the barrel the, the barrel knot doesn't look as nice as if you use the round leather cord. So that could also make a difference in how your knot turns out. But either way, it's knotted and it you know looks good. So all right, so I want that to be a little bit tighter. So now I'm just going to pull on my larger cord, my longer one, and make that loop smaller, okay? Just like that. Okay, and then once I feel good about where it is, and then I can tighten it, and I have my finished end to loop over my button. All right. Okay, guys. I think that I think that pretty much does it for all the different ways you can do some things. Um, if you have seen some of my videos, you know that I have also done um, beaded loops to go over, and I've done quite a few of them in the last, um, I don't know, month or so. I think I've, I've done like th maybe three or two, but watch those because that'll give you another way to do it. All right, guys. I hope this was really helpful, and I, um, if so, let me know, and if there's anything else that you would like to see, let me know. If I haven't done it before, I'll be honest with you and I'll tell you and then I'll do some research and then we can all practice it together. All right, you guys, I hope you have a really blessed evening and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.